Hello friends. In this video I'm going to talk about enlightenment. Not, not the age of enlightenment in history, but spiritual enlightenment. What is enlightenment? In my opinion, based on my own experience of what I've read, enlightenment is fully remembering what you are. Now, what are you? Or what am I? What is everything in truth? What we are, what you are, and what I am is spirit. And there's many labels that have been used you can call it God, Goddess, Consciousness, Creator, Great Spirit, the Force, the Tao, Brahman, the Creative Consciousness and Everything, Energy, Light, Love Light, Love. It doesn't really matter what label is used as long as it is understood that it is one. It is one thing. It is what you are. It is what I am. It is the one thing that makes everything. It is the true essence of everything. So enlightenment is fully remembering what you really are, and you already are that thing. You don't become it. So enlightenment is kind of a stripping away of things to your base nature, to the truth, the true self. In Buddhism, it's called bodhi, the root bud meaning to awaken. So in Buddhism, becoming enlightenment is like becoming a Buddha, which is the awakened one. So awakening from the dream of separation into unity. In Hinduism it's called moksha and a lot of descriptions of enlightenment is a surrendering. It's a letting go of your idea of what you are and of what everything is. It's a surrendering because you already are this energy. You are this true self. It is what you really are. And what you think you are is all these added labels, costumes, masks, roles that you put on yourself. Enlightenment can be said to be sort of a death, a death of the ego or this idea of separate self. This idea of it's just me versus the world. And realizing your unity with the consciousness that's in everything. So it's a surrendering unto the mother or the father or this greater energy and consciousness. Enlightenment is realizing that you never have not been this consciousness, this love, this energy. You've just in a way have slept and dreamt that you are separate and it's just a dream. Hence the often use of saying that you are dreaming and to, enlighten, to become enlightened is to wake up from the dream. Just like a dream when you wake up, it's never that you were not that person. It's just that for a little while you're in a little fantasy land and it seems that you are different. It seems you're in a different realm, but in truth, you've always been the you, the true self. God, Goddess, Creator, the Great Spirit, the One. Enlightenment can also be said to has a surrendering or death unto the will of the One. So it's a letting go of the ego's will, this individual desires and fears, and hence suffering as well, because usually our suffering comes from our desires or our fears, and a surrendering to the will of the One so that its, its will works through us. So what we do is the best for us and for everyone else. From the, from the viewpoint of ego, this might seem undesirable because it's like, no, I want this. I don't want to do what something else wants me to do. But that's from the viewpoint of separation. From the viewpoint of unity, of course, that's what you want to do because you are this unity. It is your true will. It is your true intention. So enlightenment is remembering what you are fully in every moment and acting accordingly. And acting accordingly is letting the will of one work through you, which in brief and summary is the golden rule. Treat others as you would like to be treated because you recognize that they are not separate from you. Because you see someone's actions and you forgive them because you realize they too are dreaming and you see that they really are you. And you know that you too have made mistakes. So when you see them, you see yourself as you have made mistakes, you say, it's okay, because I fully recognize what they truly are, regardless of what they think they are, because they are dreaming. Eckhart Tolle, in his Power Up Now, has a good description of what enlightenment is, in his opinion. He says, you have it already, you just can't feel it because your mind is making too much noise. So like I was mentioning, as he refers to here, you already are, in a sense, this enlightened being. You are this truth, this one, it's just your own dream. It's just your own dream that's getting in the way. And that noise is your ego's fears and desires that seems to be 
endlessly going, that constant commentary, and that kind of blocks out just the innocent now awareness of the presence and the consciousness that's within you and within everything. Here's another quote from Eckhart Tolle from his book, The Power of Now. The word enlightenment conjures up the idea of some superhuman accomplishment, and the ego likes to keep it that way, but it is simply your natural state of felt oneness with being. It is a state of connectedness with something immeasurable and indestructible, something that, almost paradoxically, is essentially you and yet is much greater than you. It is finding your true nature beyond name and form. The inability to feel this connectedness gives rise to the illusion of separation from yourself and from the world around you. You then perceive yourself consciously or unconsciously as an isolated fragment. Fear arises and conflict within and without becomes the norm. And here's another quote from him. In that state, even my desire to become free or enlightened is just another craving for fulfillment or completion in the future. So don't seek to become free of desire or achieve enlightenment. Become present. Be there as the observer of the mind. Instead of quoting the Buddha, be the Buddha. Be the awakened one, which is what the word Buddha means. I at first really resisted reading The Power of Now because it was so popular and that's just kind of my thing. I kind of resist things that are very popular for some reason. It's an amazing book because of how clear it is and his insight and it just pierces through everything. I definitely recommend checking it out if you haven't read it. Here's a quote from the Tao Te Ching. Tao is eternal without doing, and yet nothing remains undone. Being without desire makes still, and the world writes itself. And here's a quote from Rumi. Lo, I am with you always. Any unhappiness comes from forgetting. Remember and be back close to the friend. And Rumi often referred to spirit, God, goddess as the friend. Enlightenment has also been referred to as a rebirth. And this refers to you just becoming what you truly are and letting all that, that which you are not fall away. So it may seem like a rebirth because it's back to the innocent state. It's back to your true state. It's like becoming an infant again, in a sense, because you realize this oneness, you realize this creative intelligence, loving intelligence within everything, and that it is you, so it's in your best interest to go with the flow with it. And remembering it and recognizing it and everything, you become a conduit for its will, so you receive insight and almost a higher power of it. It is a waking up to the paradise that is earth, that is now, that is all around us. It is our own minds and perceptions of separation, desire, and fear that hide it from us, but it is spread across the earth, but people do not see it. Um, why do I share these things? Why do I say these things? I had an experience and I had a glimpse of it. I believe it was a glimpse into an enlightened state and it was very brief. It was almost like a taste of it so that I could seek for it. But ever since, I, I've, I've been yearning for it, reading about it, obsessing over it, and wanting to share it to encourage others and to just share my own experience. It was brief, but it was outstanding and life-changing. And what I felt within me is indescribable. Experience, spiritual awakenings, epiphanies, sun insights are so beyond words. Yet I try because, of course, I want to share. I want, it's like a treasure that was revealed to me within. And I can't wait for other people to experience that treasure within themselves. Because it was unlike anything else I've experienced. It is, it's not taught to us. It's not taught to us in school. It is not remembered in this paradigm, in this culture. And it feels so amazing that it's very important and I want it to be remembered. I want it to have a resurgence, which I think it is, but it feels so right. And what that feeling is, is love, love, love. It is love and it is so humbling. I feel like a child again and it, it exploded in my heart and it radiated to my body and I felt like a kid. and. There was no mental noise anymore, no constant fear and desire. It was just a, a hush, a shh, it's okay. I am here. I am here taken care of. It's okay. It's almost like a giant cosmic mother picked me up and I was sobbing with the energy and the love and the presence and the consciousness that looked through me. It felt more like me than 
than this character, than this name, than this role, than this age, than this body. It felt more true than all the identification that I'm used to in this reality and in this body as a male, as an, a human, and so forth. And as I looked around, in that moment, everything was buzzing with this love. Everything was this one love, par parental, giving, compassionate, blissful energy. Everything was it vibrating, and it was it in me, and it was it in everything. So the unity was felt, and oh my goodness, it was overwhelming. And just, I could do nothing but swoon from it and sob. And that, I believe, is enlightenment, and I believe it's possible to live in that state all the time. Of course, you maybe you can fall into it and out of it, and it's not the end of the road. It's a, it's, I, I feel like there's no roof, right? That's just the next step in our eternal, infinite growth. It's not like you reach a point and that's it, I made it. But I feel like that's almost like a phase change, like water to vapor or ice to water. It's a drastic change within the eternal steps and growth of experiencing the unity, the infinite mystery. I feel like enlightenment is remembering what we are within our heart. It's moving from this into this, it's to, into a knowing right into a, a silent presence of innocence and wonder of the now of the infinite now and seeing that everything is really bursting with bliss we just forget it and don't see it because we drape these sheets of meaning and perception over things this is that that is this you are the you but really everything feels it's bursting with bliss and you are bursting with bliss. We just tend to forget. And when we forget, we suffer. But that is again the point I feel of this earth experience. It is to forget so that we remember. It's a fun game. It's a, plate of, it's a, it's a play of hide and seek with each other. We came to play, we came to master ourselves. It is a master school. It's a master school of illusionment, of forgetting. Dive into the dark so that we may remember the light because it is exciting to forget so that we can remember again and have the full new, full experience again of rediscovering what we are. That's like very exhilarating, it's very exciting. And to put it very practically and simply, enlightenment is being in a state of love, of pure love, unconditional love. No more judgment, because when we judge, we hold our love back with no judgment. Our love is unimpeded. The love is unimpeded because that's what we really are. All these other names I listed, right? God, goddess, creator, consciousness, the force, the infinite, the love light. It's really all love. That is the energy. That is the word that comes closest to scratching. It's true meeting, right? It is love. And all the masters, when they really break it down and say it very simply, they say, God is love. The truth is love energy is love. So what is enlightenment? It's realizing that you are love and that so is everything else. So to be enlightenment is to be in love. And it's operating more from the heart and less from the constant dialogue of desire and fear. It is the death of the ego. And not to say the ego goes away, it plays its part. But it isn't master anymore. It becomes servant. It becomes a steward to help spread the love of the one. When Jesus was asked, how do we reach eternal life? How do we reach heaven? He said, it's easy, love, right? Love God, the, your Lord, with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your body, and your, with all your soul, and your brother or sister as yourself. Do this and you shall have life. I think this is an important quote. And I don't think of Jesus as the, through the lens of Christianity or Catholicism. I look at him as a master, just like Lao Tzu, just as like Buddha, someone who fully remembered their full potential. And he said, do you want enlightenment? Love, love with all your body, with all your mind, with all your heart. Love this one true identity, this true self that's within everything, that's within you, 
and it's within your brother and sister. So to sum up, so since I'm starting to rant, enlightenment is remembering what you truly are and realizing your full potential. It is remembering that you are the one love that is within everything and acting accordingly, acting with its will, which is love. Thank you for watching. If you like, please like. Thank you.